you're happening to be watching this video. Maybe it's even the evening. Uh, this is Mr. Copper that here. We're going to go ahead and walk through the rest of this 2.1.6 step-by-step trust, um, uh, trust system uh, activity that we uh, started in our previous class. Uh, so here's what we have so far. Obviously, we, we spent some time in class kind of talking about the moment and uh, how to calculate that moment. And, you know, I, I suggest you... Uh, Look back at your notes real quick if you want to see you know where we got those moment numbers from uh, those distances and all that stuff to get the RCY and we sort of you know ended class uh, coincidentally all three classes uh, ended at this point where we found the reaction force at, at Y at RCY for that matter 775 pounds and then we went on from there a couple of you went ahead and tried a couple more just to make sure that you knew what you were doing or to try to see what you knew what you were doing um, but you did fine and so here we go. Let's go. We're going to go ahead and continue this now. So here's the uh, free body diagram that we have. We kind of page back real quick, and you can see here's that free body diagram, and here's some of the you know math that we had for that, right? So since we now found this is 775 pounds, it's 775 right here. That actually is going to give us a little bit more information that we can now use to try to find a few more reactions, such as RAX and R R R A Y, right? So that's 775 pounds. So now let's go back to this box. What it wants us to do is it wants us to write the equation for the sum of all forces in the x direction. And uh, we can do that. What I did was this sigma, I copied and pasted this. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of um, draw that here, what this equation is, rather than try to type it. Uh, so I'm going to try to just get rid of that and undo that. And if I can't, I can just undo. There we go. OK, so I'm just going to kind of draw that in here. And we'll go ahead and just write a little sigma. Right. Actually, I'm on a thicker pen, but that's OK. Sigma, and then let's thin that out a little bit. F sub x, right, equals zero. Okay, so all of our forces in the x direction will equal zero. Okay, so now since we know that, right, if we look back at that diagram really quick, we can see that there actually is um, only one force in the x direction, right, and that's R A X. So if I write R sub A X. Okay, what does it equal? It equals zero. Because all of the forces in the x direction add up to zero, and there's only one. So RAX is a big old zero. Okay, zero pounds. All right, so therefore, RAX done. Now, if we go back to the y, right? Same thing for y here, right? Sigma, draw my sigma, right? I'm going to kind of cheat here a little bit. That's okay. Um, here's my sigma. Not so very good sigma, but that's okay. And then F sub y. What does that equal? Zero. I should hear you all say zero when I, when I say that, right? So the two forces in the y direction at this point. We know RCY is 775. We have all those loads, right? All five of the three of those loads, okay? So if you don't mind, if you don't mind me taking it, making a quick quick simplification while we, while we do this, negative 3,000, negative 1250, negative 3,500, that's negative 7,750. Okay, just like it was when we did uh, did it back up here, right? So we had those three loads. Those were our loads. But then we also have the value of RCY, right? RCY plus the value of RAY. Oops, sorry. Subscript tool goes away when I do that. And that equals zero. Okay? So when I sub simplify here, right, this RCY is going to become 775. Okay, and this um, seven thousand seven. You know, I just realized that I did I did something slightly uh, wrong here. I used the moments and not the thing. So let me fix that really quick. Uh, that's not that. That was uh, that was negative one thousand, negative five hundred, negative two fifty. That's negative seventeen fifty. My fault um, to fix that. Good thing I caught that now before I got some ridiculous answer. So I will add that seventeen fifty to this side. I will replace R C Y with seven hundred seventy five, and I will find that my simplified equation is R A Y R sub A Y, okay, is equal to negative. So it's positive seventeen fifty because I moved that over, and then I would subtract seven seventy five from it. So that means that it is nine hundred seventy five pounds. So the solution nine hundred seventy five. Okay, and that simplification again is we knew RCY, we replaced 775, and then we just simplified and subtracted to the other side, and we would get REY equals 975 pounds. Okay, so our uh, diagram, if we go back really quick, we can now update our diagram, right? We know that this particular force here is zero pounds, 
and we know that this particular force here, and I'll just color this red just for consistency, uh, this one here is 975 pounds, which makes sense. Okay, and again, remember that this plus this, plus you know all our reaction forces will kind of even out the loads, right? So if we look at the loads and the magnitude of the loads, that's 17, uh, 1750. So the sum of 775 and 975 is also 1750. So that's always one way you can check to see if you found the reaction forces uh, correctly. Okay, so once we do that, right, we found our reaction forces, we're all happy, it's great, okay? But then we gotta keep going, right? We're gonna calculate individual trust member forces, okay? Now, what I've done here is I've created a, another little chart over here that I can switch back and forth to, okay? And uh, I've got the miniature version of that truss I showed you in class, but then I've got this method of joints uh, sketch here as well, plus with the reaction forces all sketched in and the loads are all sketched in, okay? So if we flip back to the step-by-step -step truss, what they want us to do is they want us to start at joint A. Now again, in class I said, well, we should start with a, with a joint that's got a, uh, some known information as well as some unknown information, uh, and it turns out, of course, that Point A is a pretty good place to start because AB, horizontal, AD at an angle. I just forgot to put the angles in here. So let me do that really quick, 45 degrees. And this is 45 degrees here as well. And then this is going to be 56.3. And this is also 56.3. OK? And those are degrees. So just uh, go with me on that one. I can just put a little degree symbols there just to make sure. Degree, oh, that's really little. <laughs> Let's try a little bigger. Let's see, degree degree, degree, and degree. Okay, so those are angles in there now. So he wants us to take this joint here at joint A, and uh, just for simplification, what I'm gonna do here is, because I have the power of the smart board here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. So we're gonna take this, and we're going to copy it, and I'm gonna bring it over to my step-by-step -step truss diagram. Let's see how, how it fits in here, let's see. Hey, not bad, right? That's pretty good, actually. Uh, if I can just go ahead and just drag this over, let's see if I can do that. If it's gonna let me drag it as one, no, it's gonna, yeah, I have to drag them, so let's try that again. Okay, let's see if I can paste it right here. No, it doesn't want to do that. Oh, rats, okay, so much for my, uh, so much for my uh, hope at efficiency, right? Okay, so, but anyway, let's just go with that. Since I can just paste it there, I know it's there. Let's just, let's go with that. Let's see if we can work with this. All right, so now, here's our free body diagram. Here's AD, right? AD is this one right here, and AB is this one right here. So those are our two unknowns at this point. And we can find both of them just by analyzing joint A. All right, now, one thing I do want to say, and thanks for watching this video, by the way, on this part one of this video, I just want to point out that we're not going to write ADX as a value. We're not going to write the substituted version of ADX as a value. And the reason why is because in class we taught, uh, we were talked about just writing the expression that gives you ADX, okay? Because that's a lot easier to use and solve. So in this case, what I, would ask, what I would ask you to do, instead of calculating ADX, equation, substitution, solution, instead, skip the equation and solution and just write AD cosine, and that's X, so 45, okay? So that is what I would like you to write there for now, okay? Because, yeah, that's a value, and yeah, that's something we could calculate and get an exact value for, but... Let's just leave it at that and use it to our advantage. Use some Sokotoa to our advantage, okay? All right, next page. So we move on. The next thing it wants us to do is ADY. Well, guess what? Didn't we just do something similar? We did. AD sine 45, okay? So we put that there, all right? We can kind of leave the equation substitution uh, just like that. Okay, so let's go back and look at our joint diagram one more time, all right? AD, right, we got an X direction. We have actually three forces in the X direction here. We have the, the uh, zero pound uh, reaction force, so technically we really only two. We have AB, which is entirely in the X direction, and we have the X component of AD, okay? So we can write, for the forces in the X direction, right, we can write the individual forces RAX, right? Oops, sorry, RAX, and we can kinda go with that on that one, I'm sorry. Uh, and then we have the AB, right? And then we also have the ADX. And then the forces in the Y direction in this case are ADY, right? And then also the reaction force at AY, right? So those are our forces. So we pull in the forces, okay? And then we're gonna go and go ahead and make some equations. Okay, static equilibrium. So the first thing they want us to do is they want us to find AD by calculating the Y direction static equilibrium. 
And the reason why we're starting with y is again, there's only two forces in the y direction and we actually know one of them, right? So f, so if we do f sub y equals zero, I need a shortcut key for that subscript, I tell you. Uh, and let's go ahead and draw a quick little sigma here, right? Here's our sigma, right? That's not bad for a mouse sigma right there. Now, what is the substitution, okay? So the equation, we know it's gonna come out to zero. So that's gonna be R A Y, right? R A Y plus the Y component, oops, let me get out of the subscript, plus the Y component of AD, right? Here's AD Y, and what does it equal? It equals zero, okay? Now the simplification, right? We're looking for AD. We can replace it Right, we can replace the a, the y with the sine of the sine of 45, and we can replace r a y with 975. So 975 plus a d sine 45 equals zero. So we'll find if we move the 975 over to get negative 975, and we divide by sine 45, we will find that a d equals the simplification of negative 975 over, all right, I'm just gonna draw that real quick, over the sine of 45, right? Okay, and if I use my calculator to find out what that is, negative 1,376, sorry, 78, one, negative 1,378.86, uh, if I'm reading my calculator correctly. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so again, now it's negative, right? So keep in mind, once we know that it's negative, we're gonna think compression, right? We're gonna think that this is gonna be a member that's in compression, so we'll put a little C there to remind us, right? Okay, well actually, now that we have the value, negative 1,378.86, we go back to our joint FBD, and we're gonna put a C here, right? And then of course, we could also change the direction of our arrows, and we can do that in our free body diagram too, okay? So I'm gonna put those arrows like that, pointing back at the points instead of pointing at the points. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just note that this is compression. And then I also kind of like to keep a running tally of the values. We don't have to do that here because it is step-by-step, step, but just so you know, in the future, when we are uh, calculating these and I find these members, I like to keep a list of the uh, values that we found so far. So, but we know that that's a C, so I'm gonna mark that. And I now have one of my values here, negative 1,378.86, and that means it's compression. All right, equation. So for now, we're gonna define AB by using the ecstatic equilibrium, right? Okay, well, that is the same deal, right? Sigma Fy, Fx, excuse me, all right? F sub x, okay. And what does that equal? Equals zero. Oops, and I put my subscript in there, whoops. I actually put superscript in there by accident. All right, and then what are the uh, forces in the x direction? So if I go back and kind of look at my, uh, my FBD for joint A, uh, which is now two pages away, I'm gonna have to go back a little bit here. I need that page browser open, I guess. Um, we see that there's nothing here, right? The X component of this force and the Y component of, uh, sorry, the X component, well, this is all X, right? AB is all X and it's the X component of AD. So those are the two forces that actually matter in uh, this calculation. So we'll go ahead and we'll go back to where we were, right? Love those random transitions, Mr. Copper, right? Uh, we'll go ahead and throw ADX, right? ADX, I'm gonna remember skip, I'm gonna skip the uh, RAX, don't worry about that, plus, a, B, A, B equals zero, right? And again, just like I did last time, I'm gonna replace that X with cosine 45, right? So A, D, cosine 45, but since I have the calculated A, D value, I'm gonna use, and then since if I remember that it's pointing down and left, I'm gonna use negative 1378.86, right? Since it was negative, right? When I post that, when I drew that vector earlier, the vector sense was down and left. And then it's again plus A, B, right? And that equals zero. So that really means that AB is negative, it's actually positive, AB is positive 1378.86 times cosine 45. And when I hit that in my calculator, I find that AB is 975 pounds. Okay, 975 pounds. Indicating, of course, that AB is in tension. Okay, so we would just make a note of that as tension, and then go back to our joint FBD and put a T for tension there, okay? So you kind of remember, another way to look at our, how, how much progress we've made, all the spaces or numbers we need, right, are all, we need to know that. So this is indicating we know this number. And again, on a real trust, but it's not step-by-step, step, I would go ahead and make a list down here. 
Okay, so I'm going to end part one now. This is about 15 minutes at this point. So I'm going to end this. I'm going to save it, and then we're going to go to part two. In part two, we're going to do the next uh, step in our, in our uh, activity, which is going to be uh, followed by the uh, CB. And so we're going to start at joint C for our next one. So we're going to go to that other reaction course. So go ahead and go to part two, and uh, we'll see you soon.